I still remember my first line of code, console logging Hello World as I shaped my career from an English teacher to a software developer. Seven years forward, I became a senior developer and have leadership experiences in multiple companies. Started a couple on my own, and now I mentor aspiring programmers. In this video, I'll teach you exactly what you should do in your first three hours of learning any programming language or framework. So, my name is Phil. I became a senior developer after the age of 30. If this video becomes of use to you, please like and share this video and comment your own tips and tricks, maybe even comment the reason why you want to start becoming a developer. I read all my comments and would love to hear about your journey. I am actually learning Python and Fast API at the moment because my friend asked me to write some backend code, so I will be able to show you exactly what I would do in the first three hours when I'm learning something new. I'll just go through the steps real quick. So step one, I'd Google. Step two, look at the documentation. Step three, watch a tutorial. So step four, and I think this one's very underrated. The GitHub search bar is very underused, but search GitHub for example projects or templates, and uh, you can see like the best practices with it. And I think it's a very underrated one. And uh, step five, start building a project, and if that doesn't work try and find someone who knows let's get started so the first thing I'll do is look at Google I'm learning fast API right now I've Google search fast API comes up if you guys are wondering what this extension is here it's uh, called grepper it's just an extension that I use for programming or whatever it comes up with like the first answers and like stack overflow with the green check mark or something like that it's pretty useful so uh, let's look at the fast API code and what it is so fast API let's look at the Wikipedia I've never really looked at the Wikipedia before it's a web framework for building HTTP based service and API it uses Pydantic and type hints to validate and fast API also automatically generates open API documentation for APIs built with it and it was first released in 2018 cool so I think a big one is it makes documentation uh, automatically makes documentation that's uh, pretty good Pydantic is some validation so it maybe can help with throwing some 422 errors Starlet is a lightweight ASGI framework toolkit to support async functionality in Python Uvicorn is a minimal low-level server application web server for async frameworks following the ASGI specification technically it, imp it implements multi-process model with one main process which is responsible for managing a pool of worker processes and distributing incoming HTTP requests to them the number of worker processes is pre-configured but also can be just sit it up and down at runtime and the open API integration is the documentation I believe so let's read about what ASGI is really quick so asynchronous server gateway interface so is a convention for web servers to forward requests to asynchronous capable Python frameworks and applications it is built as uh, a successor to the web server gateway interface WSGI so I guess it, it allows us to use these async await kind of things inside of Python so let's uh, take a look at it and uh, try it out so I think I have a pretty good understanding of what fast API is let's look at the github fast API has a bunch of um, stuff and I'll probably look at this uh, fast full stack fast API template I think um, that would show me like the best examples of the code and stuff like that so uh, fast API it's fast on par with node.js and go fast to code let's see Starlet for web parts, Pydantic for data parts. So all you need to do is create and activate a virtual environment and then install Fast API. Let's try it out. What is this? Make sure you put Fast API in quotes to ensure it works in all terms. Okay. And let's create it. So that's something we can do. It seems pretty easy. Let's look at the documentation as well. The Fast API. Start reading about it. Look at the bottom. What I like to go to is there should be like a quick start thing. And I always try to just like follow the real quick start guides and then build on top of that. The first things we're going to need to do is uh, first steps. So the simplest fast API file would look like this run live server. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So let's just look for a quick start kind of thing. First steps tutorial guide. I don't really need to know all that kind of stuff. Let's go here. Where's like the install? Concurrency tutorial user guide first steps. Path parameters. Let's talk about concurrency and async gateway. Details about the async def syntax or path operation, some background that asynchronous code concurrency and parallelism. I thought Python was single threaded, but if it can handle concurrent tasks, that's pretty cool. I guess with different workers. Let's look here. So I'm learning environment variables. I don't need any of those. Virtual environment. I know how that works. Let's try it out. So what I need to do now is we'll go to that GitHub fast API and let's go here. That's the CLI. Let's go here, fast API. I'm gonna go to the installation. Let's uh, copy paste this. Um, I think I already started this code here. So I'll go to CD code, CD apps, CD self trip, self trip backend, code. All right, so it's an empty project. I'll go in here, make it a bit bigger. First steps first, so I need to create a virtual environment. There you go. Now we need to go into the source VNV bin activate. So now I am in a virtual environment. 
So if I pip freeze, I'll have nothing. I'll run the pip install fast API standard command that it asked me to. And now, if I pip freeze, I should have a bunch of packages. So now I can pip freeze and then write it to my requirements.txt. All right, and now this is created for me. So now, if later on, if someone wants to like pip install minus r uh, the requirements.txt later. So now uh, I'm gonna put this to git. So I, the first thing I wanna do is a fast API dot git ignore file. So I'm just gonna look at this guy. I'm gonna copy paste this. I'm gonna u dot git ignore. And I'm gonna paste that and then git status and git add to commit in it to git push. Oops, git push. All right, so now we're on like we're, we're we kind of done step one we've googled about it we read the wikipedia we're looking at the documentation and basically now you know in the documentation there's some kind of quick start tutorial or something or how to like a sample file that i can kind of copy and i'll look at that real quick and i know this isn't like learning a programming language but it's a framework i guess python is pretty cool and i'll open the browser here put the code on this side so now i'll go to here and it says that i can uh, create a file main.py so I'll just do that. Main new file main.py. Let's copy paste that in there. And now I'll close the file branch. I'll clear. And then I'll do run it with the server fast API dev main.py. So fast API uh, dev main.py. It says to run this file. And now it runs. So let's read what's going on here. So what it did was from typing import union from fast API import fast API. And then uh, at app get just the bare route it'll just say hello world it'll return an object like this i guess and then at items at item id it'll um it'll return me something let's let's check it out does it work and right now i know that it's running at 8000 and it gives me a docs file too so let's look at the docs real quick localhost 8000 slash docs but look i have some read root you can try it out execute it and it says hello with a key hello and a string of world okay that's cool I can hit it a lot, and it says that I'm hitting a 200 every single time. All right, cool. So now uh, let's look at this items item ID. Uh, it says it's required, so I'll try it out. I'll put in like a one. Uh, it says that this one is not required, so I'll just try that one. Execute. Something's hitting. So item ID one Q null. So if I type in one and I execute, it'll it'll send back the uh, parameter. So that's I guess how you get the path parameter. And this this thing, the union from typing. So I guess Q has to be a string or none, I guess. And item ID is a number, I guess. Let's uh, check it out now. Now that we have an understanding, let's try to make uh, like a another route, like at app dot get. Uh, let's go like ABC. That's the decorator, and this is the read ABC, and then return key value there you go and now if I refresh this guy is it gonna happen so now I have a new route here read ABC try execute 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 and now it returns me key value that's pretty cool pretty easy and pretty fast so now what do I have to do so next I'd watch a tutorial I'm gonna watch that on my own real quick I'm gonna pause the video real quick I'll be right back I'm gonna watch the like uh, how you can find a tutorial is maybe just go to like youtube.com and uh, let's just do fast API tutorial quick Maybe I watch like a nice quick fast API video, like 11 minutes long. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, so I got back. I watched the tutorial. It seemed pretty doable. So I don't want to connect to Postgres yet. So I'm just going to make a static variable and make some kind of easy CRUD. So now I watched the tutorial. Step four, you know, I search for GitHub or uh, start building a project and a good way to build a project because honestly, you have to think like everything on the internet is like a CRUD or like what you're doing has been done before, right? So maybe I'd look for like fast API CRUD and then like there's a quick guide to implementing CRUD and I'd follow this tutorial, right? And it came out recently. One thing you have to look at like on tutorials, right? I always look at the date of when it was made, right? So that's pretty important. So, you know, a CRUD is a create, read, update and delete. So it's saying that um, I need Uvicorn as well. So let's look at that. So earlier when I ran my um, pip freeze command, 
Is there going to be a... Okay, so Uvicorn automatically already got installed with the Fast API uh, package. I guess that they changed that recently because this guy's telling me to change, install Fast API and Uvicorn, but I installed it through the uh, standard command. So Fast API in a string uh, bracket Uvicorn. So uh, I did that one. So now he's telling me to create a main.py file. Now let's define a data model. So just open this up and let's, uh, let's make a new folder called like crud and then I'll make a model.py. All right, now I'll do, I'll just copy paste this. So I'll copy that and then I'll make, I'll just put in the main.py for now. Put these guys in and then I have an articles. Wait, I'm gonna close this up and I'm gonna import this, add from crud.model import articles and list, I'll import this too. All right, now got rid of all the red lines. Okay, so I imported list from typing and then the uh, crud model from article. So I'm gonna move all this crud operations in there, but I'm not really like, um, working on these projects now or this is just a test project so let's just get it working so now I'll run the application and I'll do what was it fast API dev main.py alright so now let's go to the localhost 8000 slash slash docs and now I have this articles crud right so right now if I try it out I execute it, I execute, I get a 200, I get an empty, empty array, which is this empty array that got set here, right? Let's just act like this is a database. All right, and then uh, let's post some article here, I guess. So let's post it, try it out, uh, execute, execute. So now I should have two items here, right? So I could now execute on get, and now I have two items in here. And we can try to update one, I guess. Put, so the article ID that I will use, I know I'm going up and down a lot. I'll do ID one. I'll find the first one, I think. And then I'll just try it out. I'll put in zero. And then I'll change this ID to one. And let's try it out real quick. Execute. Execute. And now the ID is one. And now if I get it, well, I post it on accident. Now if I get it, I should get one, zero, zero. So I know that I'll turn the first zero back into two. So we can kind of zero. I'll change this to an ID of two. Execute that. I'll execute. I have ID two. ID zero, ID zero. All right, cool. I guess it's getting it from the index. Oh, that that's what's going on. So if I wanted to change. Okay, let's just try to change it to zero, one, and two. One second. So article ID at two, I'll change the zero. Execute. And then at one, I'll change to one, one. Execute. And the one at two, I'll change it to two. I know this isn't how DB works, but this is how the array index works. Uh, and that's how they're kind of updating it anyways. So I'll just... Now I'll try to get them and they should be all in order. So, oh, now it's two, one, two. One second, let's fix that really quick. Put, and then at article zero, I'm gonna change him to zero. Execute, and now if I get these guys now, it should be zero, one, two. Yeah, all right, now if I want to delete one, how does the delete work? It takes the ID and it deletes the one at that index. So I'll delete zero, I guess. Or I'll delete the last one, so two and execute that and it seems like one got deleted so if I get it now execute it's zero and one all right cool I understand how to like make these uh, crud and like these paths and then kind of like use this article uh, type and pretty cool so it's always gonna come back as ID name and price as a dictionary and then I did clone a project recently and I will show uh, I have to look at how to connect the Postgres I'll just look at it with you guys but I won't do it so here so let me go here app database we will use sql alchemy and i'll just uh, send in the um, create engine with the sql alchemy database url and i'll just, i'll get that going with that and then i'll create the session that'll create and i'll do it with docker to up the postgres for now and i'll probably take this file that i found in a different repository and it'll kind of speed up my processes and uh now i can build a project and um now uh, you know if that doesn't work you know i'm gonna call up one of my friends that have used fast api and that'll be it so now i kind of know how to do fast api now i have to put it together and make a back end for my friend we're gonna make a pretty cool project he sent me some algorithms for something that he wants to put together about vacationing or something. So now what I showed you today, these steps will work with any programming language or framework you want to learn. This is how I would learn today, even as a senior developer. I would do these exact steps and this would be my first three hours. If you want help learning programming, join the Discord where you can meet like-minded programmers who want to level up together. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it too. Coding saves lives.